So now I'm going to show you how the, the basic concept uh, of the basic flow of creating a neural network. So we'll be showing using the tool uh, called Keras in Python. Uh, we won't be capturing any data today. We'll just be downloading data from the internet and then uh, feed it through a neural network classifi classifier for the training. And then Bartos will then show you how to convert this to STM32 code. So we'll get the data, uh, do some preparing, some framing on it, uh, pre-process the data to prepare some features that will then be fed to the neural network training. And then we'll build a convolutional neural network classifier, train it using the data that we've prepared, and evaluate it against data that we've set aside. So we have a data set that will be split into three different uh, subsets, where the first uh, part is going to be used only for the training to improve the model. And then we have test data set that's uh, it's like uh, new information that's unknown to the model during training, and it's used to evaluate uh, how it behaves. It's just like when you're at school, uh, you've given new questions uh, at an exam that you haven't seen before. So the full pipeline for uh, audio scene classification is you have your input signal in the time domain that's converted to a uh, frequency domain and then further to the mail domain using the log mail preprocessing. This is called a feature extraction. Those features are then scaled and f fed to the convolutional neural network where we get an output confidence of each class. This is called the softmax layer, typically found in classifiers. The data set uh, we'll be using, so we're not going to be doing it live. I'm just going to reference the code for you. And I highly encourage you to go and look at the, the code and try it yourself. The data set is very large. It can take up to tens of gigabytes on your hard drive, so you need a good machine. Uh, it was originally found in the TUT Acoustic Scene uh, 2016 dataset. This was a competition, and attendees were given a task of classifying the sounds. It had 15 different uh, classes, so for our example, uh, we narrowed it down to only three classes. So like the classes such as bus, car, and train were all merged into one class called N-Vehicle. The signal was downsampled from 44 kilohertz to 16 kilohertz. This is the, frequent, the sampling frequency that we'll be using with our microphones, and from stereo to mono. The Python code to download the data set is just load data into the development data set with the inputs and ground truth or expected output for development and evaluation. Then we want to frame this, uh, this uh, input signal. So they originally, they came at 30 second long uh, input uh, recording and we want to cut them down to one second long clips so we get even more data. We have, uh, for example, 11, uh, 1,170 uh, sample for one case. For the feature extraction, we're taking this one second long uh, signal that we're further cutting down into uh, overlapping frames, apply the hand window on it, FFT, melt it, filter bank application, and then we create each column that we lay side by side. Then we finally apply some log scaling to it to get our 30 by 32 uh, representation of the input sound. The male filter bank is just, we take the energy of an each filter, sum them up, and apply a log scaling to it at the end. Here's the code to uh, work on all the input features. So we just have What's important here is the function called feature extraction. It's going to call a submodule. And the other code around it is just to uh, get the correct number of files and so on. Next, we want to prepare the output data, so the what we call ground truth, uh, to convert it to the one hot encoding expected by Keras. So this is uh, each output will be equal to the expected output of the neural network. So the confidence level of each class. So here, for example, uh, in an ideal world, we would expect to have a confidence level of 100% for outdoor. Here, 100% for in-vehicle, matching the input feature number uh, 3. 
Uh, before we feed our uh, what we call the spectrograms, the input features to the neural network, we want to standardize them, to normalize them using the standard scalar from uh, sklearn. So this will have a zero mean and a unit variance of one. So th all the values will be uh, in between minus one and one before going into the neural network. The data set split, as I mentioned earlier, we want to split our data set between a uh, training sample, validation sample, and test samples. The training and validation sample will be used during the training. We'll compare, uh, we'll use the training data set to feed the neural network. So this is just like the exercise that you're doing during a class. So the lesson validation sample is, uh, let's say, the exercise that you're doing in the class, and the test is the final exam. So simple analogy. For the neural network that we'll be building, it has two convolutional layers and two dense layers or fully connected. You can see that the input shape matches the dimension of our input features, a 30 by 32 matrix. And the output shape, uh, the dimension of three, matches the number of classes that we want to classify. We have intermediate uh, activation functions ReLU. This is to transform the inputs into outputs for each neuron. So from the values, whatever it has been calculated, to zero, from zero to one. And then the softmax activation function is to pull the winner apart without really destroying the information of the other uh, confidence levels. During the training, the training happens in uh, different steps. So initially, the coefficients, the weights of the neural network are initialized to random values. And we'll have a very high, a very poor accuracy. So then we say, oh, it didn't, uh, it wasn't trained properly, so it's going to adjust those coefficients to become better and better and learn. Uh, this is where you do the learning on a powerful computer like a GPU or in the cloud, and you're creating your model. And it can last from, uh, let's say, 30 minutes to uh, several days and so on. And at the end here, for example, we've reached an accuracy of 99% against the validation data set. Then if we give it the test data set, so this is unknown data it hasn't seen before, we'd get an accuracy of 89%. Another way of looking at uh, how well our model is behaving is to look at something what we call uh, the confusion matrix, where we can see the confidence, the accuracy per class. So what we can see here is that the indoor and outdoor classes are not as well recognized as the in-vehicle class but we still have a pretty, actually very high accuracy here. <coughs> Finally, all of this is done usually by your data scientist and then given to your firmware developer. So the data scientist should provide you with a model.h5 and some test data. The model.h5 is like exporting the model, the pre-trained model, to a universal standard uh, file, which contains the model topology, the number of layers, number of uh, the filters and kernel size, and the weights and the biases. So this is the file that will be used in Xcube AI to map it to your code to your microcontroller. Then we can export the data set, so the test data set, for example, into a simple CSV file for uh, further validation on the target. So here's a link to the Python code that you can go online and run this code yourself.